Hey guys, my name is Sharon Rui and I'm a UI UX designer. This is my very first video here on YouTube and I'm super excited to finally be doing this. I've always wanted to share some of the knowledge that I have to help you as a designer or whatever field it is, really level up and grow as a UI UX designer. So a lot of my posts and stories are gonna be centered around um, UX design, tutorials that I think are gonna be super helpful to you and all sorts of resources that could help you grow in your career. So if this sounds like something you're gonna be interested in, please like, share and subscribe. Turn on the notification bells to be notified whenever I post new content. So today, specifically, we are gonna be talking about how to become a UI UX designer in 2020 with no experience, no previous design, starting from complete scratch. So I'm gonna be letting you know some of the core practical steps that you can take as a designer to really just get in and start your career. These are gonna be steps that anyone can apply, so it doesn't matter where you're starting from, uh, you can just take these steps as you go and just um, get into it. So if you're interested, just hang on and we'll get into it in a minute. In simple terms, UI UX design simply refers to designing interfaces and experiences for human use. So we're talking about from mobile experiences to web experiences, how human beings are able to interact with certain applications or websites. This all falls under user interface design and user experience design. The goal of a user experience designer basically is to make something that is super simple for users to use. So you identify the problem and then you try to find the simplest solution possible for the user to be able to achieve their end goal. The average designer salary in USA currently is about $95,000. And that's a pretty decent amount for someone who is just getting started in a career. In Europe, it's about somewhere between 55,000 to 65,000 euros. These are pretty good numbers for people. And so aside the fact that it is so relevant in today's world, it pays really well. So if you're looking for how to get into this field, then let's get into this. So the first step you want to take to get into UI UX design is to take an introductory course. So this course, I have linked a couple of ones that I would strongly recommend you get into in the description below. These courses really give you um, a basic understanding of what user experience design is all about and help you understand some core foundational concepts. So some of these concepts include what prototyping is, the difference between UI design and UX design, um, some basics of user research, working with personas, building empathy to your users, and some really important things that you need to know as a designer. In addition to this, taking some of these courses help you realize, is this even what you want to do? It could be that you want to go down the line of something more like product management, it may not necessarily be design. So it exposes you to what the career is all about, what you should expect, and what next steps that you can take to improve yourself, and just giving you a really holistic view of your UI UX design as a career and as a work path. So step number two is I always tell people to start designing. Just start somewhere, start doing something. Doesn't matter how good or bad that is. One of the parts of um, your user experience design that people find the most intimidating is visual design. So if you are starting from scratch, you have never attempted anything relating to visual design before, you have not done any kind of graphic design thing, it can look a little bit intimidating to you. I get questions all the time. Do I need to have a bachelor's degree in visual design or graphic design? Do I need to know how to draw? And similar questions like that. And the simple answer to those questions is no, you do not need any of that. What you do need, however, is a very core understanding of some of the really important concepts that go into visual design. So this is like things like typography, colors, grids, arrangement of components, and things like that. And those things, the only way, the best way that you can learn really is to start doing. So I have included some links to some crash courses into visual design, as well as some crash courses into some of the platforms that you would most likely use to get into design. Personally, I recommend for platforms that you use either Figma or Adobe XD. They're super simple to use. They are um, very uncomplicated and you can just get into it and start creating right away. Um, another really important step that you can take in the process of trying to just learn how to design is really to get into 
a habit of doing something every single day. So create something every single day. Try to use daily UI design. It's about a hundred days of challenges that they send to you every single day. So the idea is that every single day you design a really small component. So it could be um, a card. It could be a landing page, something really small. And so these things help you, these little exercises help you practice, help you gain some knowledge of when it comes to visual design for UX, what works, what doesn't work, what looks good, what doesn't look so good, and it just gets you practicing. I also really advise people that when it comes to design or you're just starting out, I advise beginners to copy. Find something on Dribbble that you like, on Dribbble or Behance that you like, and try and replicate it. Of course, if you do want to post this, it you do have to give credit to the original um, creator of this, or um, you don't have to post it, you can just use it personally to really level up your skills. Now, some people feel a little bit iffy when it comes to the co topic of copying, but the truth is that when someone copies um, a design, their brains are really working and trying to really pick apart what aspects of the design are good, what parts look good, what parts really work well, and so it's a really great exercise to start training your mind to see things as a visual designer. So sometimes you start noticing things like, oh, this color pairs really well with this color. Oh, I like how this person worked with this shadow. Oh, look at the border radius there. And just by that, you are exposing your mind, you are exposing your eyes, your entire mind to how visual design works and what is good and what is not so good. So step three, might make people a little bit uncomfortable, but share your designs. You don't have to share it with everyone. You don't have to post it everywhere because obviously you might feel a little bit insecure because we all know that your first designs are not necessarily going to be your great, your greatest and that is fine. But you do need to share with someone who can tell you what you are doing wrong or who, what you're not doing wrong. For example, I liked to share when I first started with other designers who were a bit more experienced than I was, and I advise people to do that as well. So share with someone who can say, oh, maybe you should try this other color, but ensure you're also trying to talk to people who can be really encouraging and, this, and kind of correct your work or give you feedback in a super positive manner so you don't get discouraged either. Some people, might give um, feedback in a way that might not be too pleasant. And when you're earlier in your career, that might not be what you need. If you would like for me to give you some feedback as well, I have linked, um, given a link down below how you can book a meeting with me and just kind of pick my brain and then we can talk about some things and then I can give you feedback and also let you know some aspects that you can experiment with that could really improve the quality of your design. So it's super important to get that feedback early and fast and quick so that you can make improvements and start seeing yourself even create better works. Again, just to reiterate, your first designs are not going to be your best and that is perfectly fine. Just keep going. It gets better. You will improve with time. Okay, the next step is after you do feel a little bit more confident with some of your initial visual designs, even if you know you're not where you're, you need to be, which is completely fine, and you do have some basic knowledge of um, some uh, core UX concepts, like I mentioned earlier, personas, wireframing, EDC, another really big step that you have to take is to start designing something a little bit more complicated. The idea behind this is to really get into the full process, the full um, procedure that you go through as a UX designer. So you're going to pick a project. Now I have also linked uh, down below some websites that give you um, examples of some projects that you can take up. These are really, really useful to get you practicing. So with these projects, you're gonna want to be more elaborate and more specific and follow a really good process with them and document your process. So say for example, um, the task at hand is to design something for public transportation. You really wanna show how you arrived at what you thought was the best solution. So show your personas, show every bit of information that you think is viable, is important, show whatever style guide you use, show your sketches, show your wireframes, show every part that you think is relevant to this in um, say a case study or however you choose to share it. This is very important. So if you do not want to use um, some of these websites that I've mentioned, another great way to get this done is to collaborate. I always encourage people to collaborate either with other designers who are just starting out or with developers as well who are just starting out. 
developers usually have um, some ideas, especially front-end developers, of some great products that they might have in mind because they also need to build their portfolios. So, so developers that are just starting out to are looking for similar goals such as yourself. So they can bring some ideas that you might have to life and then at the end of the day, everybody kind of learns together. And it's also super important to work with developers at an early stage because as you progress in your career, you are always going to be working with them. So it's really great to get a head start and partner with them and just work together. If you don't have developers around you, maybe you have a product manager, maybe you have um, another designer, or maybe you just have your own personal ideas that you think are great. You can also explore partnering with um, people who are startup founders, people who have big ideas and just kind of need other people to bring it to life. Now, side note, these um, jobs or collaborations, a lot of the time you may not get paid for it. Sometimes you will if you're really lucky, but you do get a lot of experience and practical knowledge. And that is extremely important when it comes to UX design. Really having a lot of practical knowledge, a lot of hands-on applicable knowledge that you can show people, this is this, this is what I have done, this is what I have worked on, and that you can also refer back to in your mind to help you with future projects. Okay, so our next step is to work on your portfolio. Now, portfolios these days have become a little bit daunting, but it's okay to stick with the basics when you're really just starting. Do your best to document the process and some of the things and some of the projects that you have taken up previously, like I mentioned on the other step, on the previous step before the this one. So this is where you just need to show your work, show what you worked on, try and document your process, try and show it in the most um, cohesive manner possible. Try and show people, okay, this is where you started from. This is where you ended. Show as many, as much of your thought processes as you can. So I would always advise that if you're looking for something free, you can start with Behance. Behance really gives you the avenue to upload multiple things at a time and that way, and reorder them. And that way you can show people every single step however you choose to display that information dribble might be good for maybe when you're doing the daily challenges or you want to show snapshots of things that you're working on but sometimes people might prefer to see something a bit more detailed and if you're looking for a free option to do that then behance really checks the list if you're looking for paid options squarespace has a lot of great templates that you can easily use to create some really great portfolios without having to customize it too much or spend too much time trying to write code and things like that. So that's a really great um, platform that you can use. At the end of the day, the goal of this portfolio, which should have about um, two, three projects, is just as to show how much you've done, how much you've learned, and your thought process. So whatever platform you choose doesn't really matter as long as you feel this, it is communicating this best. So just have two or three of some of your best, most thought out works, put out there so that people can see. In addition to working on a great portfolio, it is also super important to have a really great resume. Now resumes can be a little bit tricky when you do not have any previous design experience, but sometimes what people don't tell you is that you can leverage on previous experience that you've had that's not necessarily design related. Say for example, you worked as a customer service representative. You might think, oh, that has nothing to do with design, but it actually could give you a lot of great insight as into working as a UI UX designer, and that could easily help you pivot. So don't leave out information like that from your um, resume. Talk about it and talk about how you think it could help you or could have helped you influence some of the designs that you make as some of the decisions that you make as a designer. In most resumes, there's a little section at the top where you can put a little um, summary about yourself, or you can include this in like your cover letter. And that's a really great place to sell yourself as someone who is um, looking to learn, someone who has past experience in such and such and thinks that that experience could be relevant to them working as a UX designer. In everything you do, you just have to really try and sell yourself as someone who knows what they're doing to an extent who is willing to learn and who is willing to experiment and try new things. Okay, so the next step can be a little bit tough, but you need to network and you need to put yourself out there. As hard as it might be, you need to show people what you have been working on, what you're doing and what you're capable of. Don't be shy, don't be afraid, don't think some people are gonna think, oh, you're not so good at designer or whatever. You're just starting out, it is completely okay that you make some mistakes or that some of your work um, probably doesn't look as amazing as you 
would have wanted it to, that is totally fine. It's okay, you're just starting out. So go easier on yourself. So network with other designers, network with developers, network with product managers, and also network with small startups. And really start to interact with these people. It is okay to shoot people messages even on LinkedIn and say, hey, I'm just starting out. Um, this is my portfolio. If you have any internship roles for me, I would be honored to work with you, etc, etc. So two platforms that are really great for networking these days and getting careers are LinkedIn and Twitter. Twitter is really a great place to talk to people on a more personal level even and give them feedback and let them know what you think of some of your products and what you think could probably even help and things like that. So don't be afraid and also share your portfolio with some of these people and let them know, oh, okay, this is some of the work I've done in the past. I'm looking for new opportunities and really just spread the word about yourself. Tell them all the great things about yourself. Tell them, um, post about how eager you are to learn and make sure you're communicating how passionate you are about good design and how willing you are to learn new things and experiment with new ideas. The last and most important step is do not stop learning. Don't stop trying to um, new designs, new ways of doing things. Do not stop taking courses. Don't stop watching people on YouTube who are doing things that you are interested in. Whether you've gotten that dream job or not, just keep trying, keep um, learning new things. If you take a new course and there's a certificate, add it to your resume, add it to your LinkedIn profile and just share that, oh, you're learning this new thing. You're trying this new thing. This really communicates to people that you are a lifelong learner. That is one thing that even um, as a UX designer till today, you always need to continually do. You have to keep learning. You have to keep ensuring that your skill set is improving and expanding. So you need to show people and even just for yourself that you can try new things and that you're open to new ideas and new ways of working and that you're picking up new skills and you're improving your current skill set. So don't stop learning. Aside taking courses, practice a lot. UX design is an extremely practical um, career. A lot of it is really in what you do and not just so much about what you've read or what you've said, but you have to show a lot of the things that you have learned practically. So redesign something, take up a new fun project. Sometimes you are lucky enough to finish it. Sometimes you might not get finished. I have a lot of unfinished projects, but in every single project that I take up, whether it's paid for, unpaid for, for myself, for someone else, I learn something new. I'm able to experiment with something that maybe my current state doesn't allow me to experiment and for me personally I keep growing and then when I share these things out people can also see that yes I am growing and every single day I'm trying to be a better designer so that is really important that you never stop learning and never stop trying something new do not put yourself in a box keep trying keep experimenting do something crazy do something out of the ordinary and share your work somebody might see it and think this is great you think out of the box and tell you hey let's hang out let's get a coffee sometimes and then just like that you're getting even closer to starting your first job so guys if you enjoyed this please like share and subscribe um, feel free to leave a comment i try to reply or i do want to be replying all my comments um, if you want to discuss something i have my contact details as well in the description so send me an email and just feel free to reach out to me about um, design related things and i will try to get back to you so i will also try to drop more videos in the next couple coming days um, you can also let me know if there's something specific that you would like for me to talk about i'm more than happy to do that and thank you so so much for being here with me and i will see you soon thank you so much and see you later